Do you remember last week, Sean O'Lowry went with ambulance driver Katie Smith to rouse a sleeping stray ferret? It needed to be brought in to see vet Stan McCaskey to have loads of ticks removed. Well, within a matter of days, the ferret was ready to be taken to a rehoming centre. This week, we followed its trail to Essex, where Shauna went to meet Wendy Brett, who runs the centre, and to see the ferret settle in. Oh, my I think we'll goodness. This little... How many have you got? Oh, I don't know, about 45 or something like that. I haven't counted them lately. The most we've ever had was 72. Well, that's quite a lot. 72? 72 was oh the most we had. So they're all very sociable, yes. I presume. Yes. So it looked like the ferret we found wasn't going to be short of company. Hello. How are you? He's really friendly. He's a nice ferret. You can't put him in with any of the girls. No, he's... Well, it doesn't actually matter this time of year because ferrets are photoperiodic. They only breed in the spring. We get quite a few actually arrive in the spring because um, people have possibly had them as pets and then the first time a man actually starts to smell it is when he's in season, which is the spring after the summer that he's born. Is that why there's not much of a smell in here? They are quite clean animals. Because mm. um, most people automatically say, oh, ferrets, they stink. Yes. But actually, they don't. <laughs> there's well, 45 <laughs> of them here, and there's not that much of a smell. Um, they will let off a smell when they're sort of upset or excited. So what are you going to do with this little Well, he's going to... What's the plan for him? <laughs> well, he, I mean, he seems perfect health, and I mean, the RSPCA have, have kept him for the sort of quarantine period. So, I mean, he can go straight into sort of cage number six, which is what we'll do with him, and then he'll have his tea later. While we left the ferret to get used to his new surroundings, I went to meet some of the younger members in Wendy's family. Oh, look at oh. <laughs> They do bite. <laughs> well, they, they have to learn not... I mean, oh. puppies and kittens will do that, and they have to learn not to do it, so you just say no. Excuse me. Look at this. Tug of war with my coat. Just, just trying to eat you. <laughs> and have you always had them as pets since you were a little child? I mean, I've had, I've had ferrets since I was 14. Right. My father brought one home and I got to look after it. And that's what got you into <laughs> yes. this. And how come you've ended up with up to 70? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I actually moved from Sussex, where I was involved in the Sussex Folk Welfare Society in the early 80s. Um, and I, in 1986, I came to Essex and there wasn't a, a club or anything. So I thought, oh, well, I'll get to meet other people who have ferrets. So it seemed a reasonable thing to sort of form one if there wasn't one. So do people call you the mad ferret lady? Of Some people just call me ferret. <laughs> <laughs> obsessed, would you say? No, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't no. say obsessed, no. I mean, you just love them. I just like them. It was tea time for the baby ferrets, which are called kits, but for the adults it was time to take their afternoon exercise. I joined Wendy and her son Guy in the sitting room as they began to put the ferrets through their paces. <laughs> Each of the 20 adults takes at least 30 minutes to stretch their legs and have as many turns as they like along the homemade tunnels. We wanted to see if our ferret was ready to join in the fun. He got off to a flying start, but it seemed he needed a bit more time before he was ready to face the crowd. Oh, <laughs> I think they call that controlled chaos. Wendy must be truly dedicated to have that lot exercising in the front room every day. <laughs>